This is really happening. Hello folks, today I wanted to show you what's inside a traffic light without destroying it. Uh, this is a polycarbonate traffic signal. It's made of plastic. Uh, the visors on this are metal. And for good reason, because the polycarbonate visors actually are very prone to shattering. Uh, they're not made very well and they're not made to stand up to the elements very long. We could have just unscrewed those screws and it would have come off. Um, so, but as you can imagine, this signal doesn't weigh very much. It's, it weighs next to nothing. Uh, so, but I'll show you the back side just to get an idea. Uh, a lot of the newer signals use this design. Uh, see it a lot around in uh, Tennessee. So uh, without further ado, I'll just open the red section and just kind of give you an idea of what's in there. So there's two thumb screws right here. Basically you just turn these, loosen them a little bit, and then they will slide over. And you can just stick them back. Uh, you will do the same to the top one, slide it back. And then this actually is a door. Uh, it's a very cool design, so you can just open the door. You get access to the reflector, the light bulb and the lens. Now the lens is also made of plastic or polycarbonate. Um, they also make these in glass. Uh, they also make metal signals, uh, which will stand up a lot better to weather and, uh, and you know, of course, any kind of impact. So the bulb that this one uses is just a 67 watt traffic signal bulb. Uh, they make a bulb specifically for these uh, because of the fact that they're on literally all the time. Uh, they also have a 135 watt variant of this also. And now this reflector is actually made of aluminum, 
Uh, and it's a special kind of aluminum that's actually treated to be reflective. Uh, now this part is plastic just for the white weight. And then behind it, that's it. That's really all that's inside. Uh, you get access to, uh, say if you have a terminal block in here or some wiring, you'll get access to that. Of course, you've got just a bulb socket. Now, Absolutely chilling. It's like it, you know, it is like something you see out of a or a movie. Did you see that? That's so weird. I think it's out of a movie. And just moments later, the dog gets me.
expedite permits for rehabilitation of the vast majority of the affected buildings and for the few buildings where demolition may be required. 2020 has been a tough year for Nashville. Today, new information. More than 500 tips came in. Authorities now identifying a person of interest. We also have national resources here. According to the Associated Press, authorities investigated a home in Antioch about 10 miles southeast of the explosion. No name has been released just yet. A neighbor who lives near the person of interest says she hardly ever saw them. Town looking for clues after a parked RV rigged with explosives blew up. At least three people were hurt. The blast, which police believe was intentional, damaged dozens of buildings and injured three people. Before the explosion, the RV blared a warning that it was loaded with explosives. And a voice started a 15-minute countdown. Officers scrambled to get people out of their homes, but the device went off just as the police bomb squad was heading to the area. The neighborhood is home to country music venues and restaurants, Officials say it's fortunate the bomb went off so early when the area was empty, almost. Police are now investigating the possibility that human remains were found near the explosion site. 911 emergency service was disrupted following the blast. Cell phone providers also reported service outages when their facilities were damaged by the explosion. The FBI is leading the investigation in what officials call an intentional act. Though their investigation is expected to keep the neighborhood largely shut down into the weekend. Derek Stoffel, CBC News, Washington.
Video of the downtown bomb on Christmas Day gives us our best view yet of the explosion and the fireball it sent towards the sky. For the first time, we're talking with an explosives expert about what he thinks was in the bomb. As News Channel 5's Kyle Moran learned, it's material that almost anyone can buy. A portion of downtown was engulfed in this fireball. This video from the top of Acme Feed and Seed gives us our best look yet at the explosion. The plume of fire and smoke rises well above the nearby buildings. This footage can tell a lot to an explosion expert such as David Heitch. This video shows those investigators so much. A couple of things. One, the duration of the thermal event or how long the, it took for the fuel to be consumed. All explosives are a fuel and an oxidizer. There was a lot of fuel, and it, it's a long thermal event. A high explosive will typically happen in an instant, and the energy is, or, or the fuel and the oxidizer are so uh, at, at such a balance that it's consumed almost instantaneously. Height says his theory is that the explosive was made out of pyrotechnics, at least in part. Crime scene investigators will go try to find the cause of these two splashes in the Cumberland River. Explosives follow the path of least resistance. Down the street in both directions and up is where the bulk of the debris and where the bulk of the energy went in that explosion. Kyle Moran, News Channel 5. 20. That's interesting. Um, I also just want to ask you really quick about uh, the materials that potentially could have led to this explosion. So obviously this is a huge explosion where the debris radius is blocks and blocks and blocks. This isn't some smaller um, kind of, you know, pressure cooker situation like what we've seen in New York City in the past. Um, what are investigators going to be doing when it comes to, to piecing together what the materials were used, how big of, a, of, an explos of, ex of an explosive device, if it is in fact an explosive device that was used, how big of that, how big that would be? Downtown, when you've got worries all